the first ten minutes we we played we played really well defensively, and um, uh, I thought that uh, took advantage of of the fact that Missouri um, was a young team, and I thought we defended well, we rebounded well, and we're up 15-11 with a loose ball, and if we gobble that one up, it's uh, it's uh, we extend our lead. But I really thought that on the bench that the lead should have been in the uh, in the area of uh, a big time double digit lead. Uh, we 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 really didn't take advantage of some offensive opportunities in the first 10 minutes of that game um, where we missed a number of wide open looks, shots, passes. We turned the ball over early where they weren't first forced turnovers, so I thought our offensive execution was really poor. And um, things that we had gone over uh, in practice, and, and, and that might have I would have felt could have had an effect on Missouri um, on the road. Um, we didn't take advantage. Um, and then you get into the latter half of the first half and then the second half and then all of a sudden depth becomes a factor. Uh, we're, we, we're not as, um, you know, we're not deep in the backcourt. You know, we, we don't, we don't, we didn't maintain that level of defense. Uh, we didn't start playing well offensively until the second half. We get into foul trouble, and our chance of winning the game becomes compromised. So, uh, heading to Vanderbilt, uh, we're going to be playing a, you know one of the top teams in the league. I don't care what the record says. Um, you know Vanderbilt uh, with three seven footers and the way they shoot the three ball and their patterns are good. I, you know, I feel like if you look at their record, they've lost seven games and they've lost to seven really good teams, um, and. Um, they, uh, uh, I think part of a function of their record is who they played. Um, so we're going up against, uh, for example, uh, you know, I'd say we've played three SEC games, Tennessee, South Carolina, Missouri. I think, you know, Vanderbilt, you know, and South Carolina are both upper division teams um, for sure. And so obviously we've got a we've got a significant challenge. Haven't beaten them in a long, long time too. So it's a, it's a, it'd be a great a great you know, opportunity for us. And, and again, those those kind of things as we're trying to make progress with our program. You know, can we continue to have building blocks like key victories, key opportunities? You know, could Vanderbilt be one? Because Ben, I don't think we've beaten them up there since 2000. Any thoughts of going with a bigger lineup because of that first, with possibly Sim and Horace and Tyler? Yeah. I mean, I know it hurts the bench depth clearly, but any thoughts of Yeah, we we have we thought of, we we're, we are. Uh, it's I can't even begin to tell you all the different things that we've thought about as far as uh, rotations and positions and including going bigger. <laughs> we're already we're already big with Jordan Granger starting at the three. Um, and I think that that's helped us defensively from a standpoint of our second shot defense is better. Jordan's a good defender. Um, it would require, it would probably require Sim to learn a third position. And one of the things that I think we're struggling with a little bit with him playing both four and five, and one of the things that his had helped it be inconsistent is playing both positions. Um, and so when we're thinking about making that adjustment, you got to think about how many different positions can he learn. Um, so I'd say right now there's, 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 there's no chance that heading up to Vanderbilt, um, he, he plays in that position. But it's something that we're looking at. I mean, we haven't done it yet. And, and obviously a short prep, we get back, you know, 2.30 on Saturday night. We did get together yesterday, um, and we'll practice today before we go. So if we would do something like that, James, it would be probably when we have a few days. How's the mood, confidence of your team right now? 
I mean, I think it's challenged. It's it's challenged, um, but I think they understand that they understand the situation. I think the the confidence level isn't great because we're not playing great. Not so much the results, but just that we 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 can play better basketball. Too many unforced turnovers, um, and and just too many guys not playing as well as they're capable of playing. You know. Scouting reports out, so there's a lot of heavy scouting report out on our guys, and so they take they take them away from what they do well. Then they do they have the game and the ability to be able to still be effective, knowing the scouting report is out, and I think that's part of you know part of what that challenge is. Um, and then we've we've had ne we've had some next man up that's taken place. When Taj got hurt, you know, next man up, Kareem Canty. When T.J. Dunnans got hurt, next man up, Bryce Brown. Um, the, the problem would then be um, who's in behind those guys. And, um, and so then as a result, we really are getting, you know, getting hurt off the bench, um, not having enough contribution off the bench. I will tell you that I've, I've always... And this is something that gets so little discussion, so little attention. Um, women's basketball has 15 scholarships. Men's basketball has 13. That's been the that's been the way for, let's say, 15, 20 years. I'd love to find me somebody tell me how many years. But it was all about Title IX. When Title IX came into effect, and they started to look really closely at trying to even those scholarships up a little bit more and get and get a little bit more opportunity. Um, that um, we lost two scholarships. And, you know, if you've got, I play 10 guys, I like to play 10 guys double digit minutes. So, in a best case scenario, 10 of my 13 scholarship guys are in the regular rotation. Let's say you got one guy that you want to redshirt every year. There's nothing wrong with redshirting one guy out of, on your team. Let's say you got another guy that's hurt and Let's say there's an eligibility issue with one. Anyways, next thing you know, you're down to nine or ten guys. And you look around the country, it happens a lot. It happens too often. Uh, and, and so I'd love to see us go back to 15 scholarship players. If, if ten guys are playing double-digit minutes and two-thirds of my roster is actively playing, well, it gives you a chance to redshirt freshmen. It gives you a chance to develop depth. Not have to play guys before they're ready. Withstand injuries. Um, I think it just happens too often when rosters get short. How have you avoided the frustration of it, Bruce? Because as you say, it's the the temperament of the team is because the the result. It's not so much the results. It's not playing well. Yeah. But when you lack that depth, you, I mean, you can't make up for that. It's right. Not, it's not bad shooting necessarily all the time or something. It's you just can't help this. Right. So how do you avoid some of the frustration that just naturally has to be there for this? Well, you you know what you can't avoid it, um, and so there is a level of frustration that sets in. Like you know, you know, for me, I can definitely point to progress. You know, certain wins at certain times. Um, you know. UAB is going to have a great year, and they're an NCAA tournament team, and that was an important win for us. New Mexico will compete in the Mountain West. We've won a road game in Coastal Carolina. Haven't beaten Tennessee since 2007 or 8. I can look at progress. I can look at recruiting. I can look at um, how we're drawing. I look at. I can look also at what I perceive as. There's patience in the community understanding our situation. I think the media has been fair um, um, with our situation. That helps me deal with the frustration. My stated goal and the things I've told our, our donors and my friends and our athletic administration is I wish I could be providing a better return on your investment sooner. That's how I feel. That doesn't change my frustration. I'm also frustrated for my players. I want, I want Tyler Harris to have a better senior year transferring year. I want Sim to be able to be having a better senior year and, and Jordan. I want our younger players to be able to continue to grow, and they are. Um, and the thing about it is, I, for the first time next year, I'll have a lot of guys back from this team. Our backcourt will return. 
and that's a good thing. Um, and then you start building that, you know, building that. I want to continue to compete. I want to continue to pick pick off opponents that we can as we go along. And I'm just, you know, I just continue to grind and find ways to play better. That's the only thing that keeps you going is the preparation of the next opportunity. In the short term, Bruce, with Vanderbilt, what have you seen with Cornette coming back for them? Is it just another seven footer that can yeah, third hit, seven footer right that can hit threes or yeah? Do they play a little different? With they him play or? a little different with him. He's not shot the threes well this year, but he can really still shoot it. Right. And um, you know the interesting thing about the stat line with Vanderbilt, everybody talks about their defense. Teams are shooting less than thir less than forty percent against them. They're still guarding. We had a hard time scoring against them, and we guarded them awfully hard last year. My goodness. You do go back and watch tape, and you do understand why we appreciated how hard last year's team played. Boy, we guarded as hard as we could guard. We are terribly undersized. But what we had was we had four guards. And sometimes offensively, we could spread people out, break people down. And, and it was, it was uh, we were a matchup problem for some because of our four guard uh, and being so small. Um, you know, I think with, I think with Vanderbilt, um, if you let them, just run their stuff. Let them run their parent patterns, and don't disrupt them at all. They, they they can really cut you apart, and that's been that's been like for example. In their first three games, they played really well against LSU at home, but LSU is arguably um, one of the you know top two town most talented teams, top two or three talented teams in the league. Then they played South Carolina and Arkansas, and both of those teams are known for their half-court defense where they disrupt you. So in some ways, Vanderbilt's had three t tough matchups for them. And so I, I think that, because uh, we'll try to disrupt, but we're not quite as good at it as, say, Arkansas or South Carolina. Quickly, Bruce, you, you experimented with new for eight minutes against Missouri. What did you see? What did you like? What didn't you like? Yeah, we, I, wasn't, I did not think New Williams was available. Um, but two things happened. One, he, he, he continued to make progress with the trainer. And two, he got a, a different brace where, where he felt much more confident and the trainer felt confident. News issue is that his patella shifts, not his knee, just the kneecap. And with the combination of the brace and some time off from the Hawaii game. So you got about, it was about two weeks that they felt like he is okay. He's okay. He's not 100%, but he's not. He can play. Um, and so we can, as time goes on, he continues to strengthen. Um, you know, New is a confident offensive player who, because of the injuries, hasn't been able to grow, progress, learn as well defensively. That's the area he probably came in the most as far behind and um, so his progress has been slowed but uh, he's back so at least that gives me four scholarship guards even though he's not going to play a ton um, four scholarship guards um, two of whom are freshmen TJ Lang and Kareem those are my, right now those are my four guards for three positions and that's why James asked questions with you know would you consider going bigger and we 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 are considering it. Any update on Trayvon Reed? No, but school starts Wednesday. And so um, as a result of school starting Wednesday, we're getting closer to an to a, to an update. Okay. Any finality with, with Taj yet? Yeah. No finality. Um, he's got one more exam when we get back from Vanderbilt. So I would expect I would expect some finality on both of those when we get back from Vanderbilt. Anything else? All right. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you.